Hello everyone, I am back again with uh, another interesting topic. Thanks to one of my subscribers who raised this query to get a solution on exporting and printing high resolution large scale maps for banner sizes. So based on that, I have tried some tricks which can help others as well in similar kinds of work. I have used Google Earth to export high resolution images and to stitch them together, I have used Photoshop and GIMP. In the end, we will also see the comparison of the outputs from both. So follow me till the end of this video. Let's begin. I will open Google Earth first to download a high resolution image of a map. I am going for a random place, let's say Chicago in the USA. Hit search and now we are on top of Chicago city. Now, by default, Google Earth is giving me an eye altitude of 54 to 55 kilometer. This eye altitude is important to note when you are downloading multiple images from Google Earth to stitch them together. Now, to get a closer look, you can use the slider in the top right corner. The more you will zoom, you will see the image doesn't remain flat and the top view will start changing and it will become a street view in the end if you keep on zooming. You know how Google Earth works, you know, the more you get into the deep and it becomes a street view ultimately in the end. So to maintain the top view in Google Earth, hold the shift key and click and drag the mouse in an upward direction using the left mouse button till you reach the maximum top angle. And if you want to set the north straight, just click the north button on your top right corner and Google Earth will automatically set the map north straight. You can either use your left mouse button to pan your map or drag it or you can also use arrow keys for smooth dragging. I will show you later how arrow keys can help us in the stitching of a large map. Now I have set the image I want to download. This is just one piece of the whole map which I am going to stitch later. I will make a note of my eye altitude which is around 3 kilometers. This will help me if I have to pause my work for some reason in between and have to restart again then it will be easy for me to set my map to previously downloaded images. Also, I will show you the area in which I am going to print the satellite map. It starts about from the big park which you can see in your top right, top left corner, sorry. It also covers the edge of a small park at the bottom and also the islands at the corner. So before downloading the zoomed images at an eye altitude of 3.02 km in pieces, I will first download the same area as one image at an eye altitude of about 7.66 km and later I will compare the result. To download a high resolution image or ultra high resolution image directly from Google Earth, go to the save image icon on the top menu bar or go to the file menu then hover your mouse over save and from the drop down you can see there is a save image option as well. Or if you want, you can also use Ctrl plus R plus S as a keyboard shortcut to activate that. The moment you select that, you can see the save image icon is now activated automatically. And you have the option to write the map title on the top left corner of the map. And other details like legends of the map, north directions, scale and Google Earth brand logo on other corners as you can see on your screen. So if you want, you can use them as a part of your map. If you don't want them, then go to the map option rollout on the top and uncheck all the elements which you don't want on your map like title, scale, compass and others. Now you see your map is fully blank uh, as I have unchecked all the elements. I don't want them currently. Next, the important part, setting the resolution of the map. The current resolution is 1645 by 975 which is very low. We have other options for HD and Ultra HD images also. Let's choose the maximum size given which is more than Ultra HD here. Now click the save image button, set your destination folder and hit save at the end. Google will start preparing your image and based on your internet speed this process will happen. The image is now downloaded. If you open the image properties, the size of the image is around 20 MB. Now let's open the image and check. The image seems to be okay to a certain level but I zoom in more it starts blurring. Also the details are not so sharper. If the area of the map which we want would have been smaller then I think by using this method our work will become easier. 
but for larger maps to be printed on large banners we need to take care of resolution and should preserve the details as well now let's go back to google earth and download the same map at a lower high altitude level of almost three kilometer which we set earlier i will divide the whole map into nine parts and will download nine images one by one to stitch them together first let's start with the corner island with the stadium you have to follow the same steps as before no changes save the image and check map options for any element you want to add or remove then set the resolution to maximum and click the save image button so the first piece is saved now i will show you how to download the rest of the parts in a way so that stitching them in the end doesn't become a problem so instead of using the mouse to click and drag your map to download other portions just do one left click on the map and start using arrow keys to pan or drag your map in google earth arrow keys are better than a mouse because it doesn't change the alignment of the map if i use the mouse to drag my map there is a chance of change in the alignment of the map while i am moving my map or i am dragging it it can go up and down in all directions which later will create a problem when i will stitch them together also dragging the map using keyboard is way smoother than the mouse it's far better now take some overlap space by identifying some landmark or something with the previous portion of the map and save the image again in same resolution and settings so the second piece of the map is also done now seven more to go in case you want more details in your large map you need to zoom into your map and divide the whole map into greater number of parts like 12 15 and so on based on the size of the map you are downloading by doing this, when you print your map on a large size banner, the details don't get blurred. Trust me, it works. It, I have tried and tested so many times. By using the same method, I have downloaded the remaining parts of the map as well. Because of the arrow keys, the alignment of these maps is not changing. It makes life easier when you stitch them together in Photoshop or GIMP. So we have all the parts of the map here in serial order. You can name them as numbers or any other way to keep them in serial order. So this is the image, the whole map, which I downloaded in the first place in ultra high resolution and remaining nine are the zoomed in parts of the map, which I will stitch now using Photoshop first and later I will try the same using GIMP. Okay, let's open Photoshop now. I am using 2022 version and it's not Photoshop CC. So things may be different if you are using Photoshop CC or some other version of Photoshop. I will create new file. Now, important part, I am using a banner size of 72 inch by 36 inch, which is 6 feet by 3 feet, which is kind of a medium size banner. You can set your own banner size in your desired units. And also, I am keeping the resolution as 300 pixels per inch. I will uh, rename the file as well. You can change the color mode also if you want, like CMYK. It depends on the machine from which you are printing. And also, you can increase the channel from 8 to 16 bit. But for now, I will try it in default. I will uh, keep other things same and create my banner. So my banner is ready. First thing, I will save this file in my computer. Next, I will go to the image menu and check the image size. You can see the image size approximate it's showing 667 MB, like a projected file size, but it's not the correct size, it will change later. You need to check with the dimensions of the image, which is showing in pixels, but it is same 72 inch by 36 inch. Also, like if you want to edit something now before starting your work, like if you want to change the banner size here or change the resolution, you can definitely do it from this place as well. Now click OK. Next, I will go back to my downloaded files and start opening them in Photoshop one by one. First, I will open the whole map in Photoshop. Right click the map and select open with Photoshop. I recommend not to drag the image directly in Photoshop. Instead, follow the method I am showing now. We will keep this file open in Photoshop and we will compare it with the stitched map in the end. Now, let's start opening the zoomed in parts of the map one by one. Right click and select open with Photoshop. Once that file is open in Photoshop, just click and drag the layer into the banner file which we created in the first place. 
You can see the file with its original resolution is imported as a new layer. Let's go back to original file and check the details of the image. Go to image, then select image size. And in this dialog, you will see the original details of the image. The resolution is 96 of this image and the resolution of the banner is 300. That's why image is coming smaller in the banner. Now let's go back to our banner and start stitching all the parts of the map together. Don't forget to save your work in regular intervals. Also one more small trick to play with. Let's say you want more bigger size of the map at the same zoom level, but you are running out of sheet here in Photoshop. Then the best way to increase the size is to increase the resolution of the banner instead of the paper size. Let me show you what I meant. So I, I will off this current layer because it was imported earlier. And I will go to image size from the image menu and I will change the resolution from 300 to 350. But make sure the resample box is checked so that you don't lose the banner size which was set in the beginning as 72 inch by 36 inch. Now if you look closer, only the pixel dimensions have increased, not the paper size and the projected file size has also increased. Click OK and Photoshop will start converting the image for a new resolution settings. Once it's done, I will again import the first part of the map in its original resolution, same as before. But this time it is looking smaller than the previous import we did. Because when we change the resolution, the previous imported file resolution was also changed because it was already there in this file. Uh, it changed with the proportion with the whole banner. Though the layer was off, the file layer was off, but still it got affected. But this new import is in its original resolution only. And we have got more space in our banner to add more area of the map if we want. But for now, I will go back to the previous setting of the banner and start our stitching process. I will put the first part at one corner for now and will go back to the images to open the second part in Photoshop. Use the same method to import the image as a new layer in the banner file. This time, go to layer panel and change the position of layer to the bottom so that we can overlap both the layers easily. For layer 1, I will change the opacity to 30 to 35 so that when I overlap layer 2 with layer 1, I can see through the layer for a perfect stitch. I have made this black and white building on the edge as a landmark and will overlap with that. You can see because the alignment of the images while downloading was not changed, so I don't have to do much to match the you know overlap perfectly thanks to the keyboard panning in Google Earth. Now these two layers are stitched. I will change the opacity back to 100. Perfect. Now let's bring other parts of the map in the same way and stitch it together. Okay, finally the stitching is done. It hardly took me 10 minutes in real time to stitch all the images together. Now I will close all other files and will keep only stitch file and non-stitch file which I opened in the beginning to compare with each other. Now I will zoom into the stitch file to a certain area and will bring the same area in the non-stitch file at the same zoom level. When I compare both the files, I can clearly see the sharpness in the details of stitch file. It is far better than non-stitch file. So in conclusion, for large area maps, it's better you break the map into certain parts and stitch them together to get a high quality print of large size. Now, it's not over yet. Printing and exporting is still remaining. If you have a flex or banner printer attached to your computer, it's highly recommended to give direct print from Photoshop. Or the shop you are going to print from has Photoshop software in them. Take print directly from that. I keep that as my first choice always. Now plan B, exporting the PNG file and then printing it. To export a high quality PNG file from Photoshop, go to the file menu, then go to export and from the drop down select export as. That gives you an export dialog where you can choose the format to be exported. Currently it's PNG. As the file size is huge and Photoshop takes its own sweet time to process the image. It took almost 3 minutes to process. Also, as my screen recorder is running parallel, which also plays a role in delaying. But the main problem is the image size. You can see it shows me a warning that image dimensions exceed the maximum allowed pixels and have been downscaled. 
Because of this, the pixels of the image is reduced. Earlier, it was 21600 by 10800 pixels. This affects the overall resolution of the final output image. I have tried increasing the resolution of the image also. Uh, tried stopping the automatic resampling, but still getting the same result. If anyone has any solution to this, please let me know. When you are done with preview processing, the export button will be activated. Click to export the PNG file. Our image is now exported. It is coming to around 240 MB. A number of pixels may have been reduced, but the size remains the same and it's still far better than the non stitch image. Now I will try the same thing in GIMP. This software doesn't require any license like Photoshop and is a good alternative to Photoshop as well. You can easily download it from its website. The link I have shared in the description. This is the interface. Now I will open the file which I have already stitched in GIMP exactly the same way I did it in Photoshop. Like it's uh, almost the same process. Same way bringing the files and you know overlaying, uh, changing opacity. It all works like that. Layers also works like Photoshop. So not much of a change. Same process. The best part is for such a large file format also this tool was running better than Photoshop like you know while the whole working process it is very smooth. Now is the time to export PNG from it. So for that go to the file menu and select export as an option. You can see the exporting is also similar to Photoshop. Set the file name. Uh, to set the file type uh, on which you want to export your image you have to go to bottom where it says select the file type and click the plus sign you can see there from that list select png or any other file type you want to export you can choose from this list it will open another dialog with different options to edit we will keep others as default for now and directly go to the compression level which is important which actually you know controls the size and resolution of the image so if I bring my mouse to that number, it says choose a high compression level for small file size, which means if the compression level is 9, our file size will be smaller and more compressed in many ways. Let's see what happens if I decrease the compression level to 4 and then export the PNG file. On your screen, the selected file is the GIMP exported file. It is coming around 452 MB. No downscaling happened as it was the case in Photoshop earlier. For more details, let's go to the properties and see. In the properties, if I go to the details of the image, it shows me the pixel dimensions same. Uh, the downscaling didn't happen here. In the same way, if I go to the properties of Photoshop exported PNG earlier and check the details, you will see the pixel sizes is less than that of the GIMP exported PNG and overall file size is 240 MB. Now let's open both the files and compare. So this is GIMP exported file and this one is Photoshop exported. So when I zoom into the Photoshop PNG file in let's say 110% zoom I do, I can see the file this closer as you can see on your screen. If I zoom more, it will start blurring. But in the GIMP file, I can reach the same view or, or the same uh, view which you can, which I saw earlier in the Photoshop PNG. If I want to bring the image to the same uh, view level, I can just reach that in 70%. Which means the GIMP file has more depth and detail in comparison with Photoshop file. Of course, because the size is also double, the pixel size is double, so definitely that's more better. So overall, the details of GIMP files are sharper and clearer than that of the output from Photoshop as this case scenario, which I have seen as the pixel count in the Photoshop output is less than GIMP output. So decide accordingly. So that's about it, guys. If you have any other query or you are stuck somewhere, put that down in the comment section for us to help you on that. See you again with another problem solving topic. Thank you all.